Hey everybody, this is Jurius Doctor, and today we're going to talk about useful anomalies. I apologize in advance, I'm recording this video with a cold, so if you hear any sniffling, that's just me being human. So, this video comes as a response to two comments from an individual named Vinsu Karma. He started off by replying to my, you know, combating burnout and need by saying, I'm really tired trying to find useful cosmic anomalies, but the only thing I've found is death. It's really burning me up. And then he said in another video, exploring for ISK is a huge waste of time. In Alpha, you found nothing but death, no relic sites, no data sites, but wormholes, plenty of wormholes and gas sites. I just threw in the towel. Bye-bye, Eve Online. Now, the reason I hate to see these kinds of comments is not because, you know, the comments are, you know, not something I like to see per se, but because the experience that this person had is unfortunately not uncommon and they didn't get the, the help from the player base that they could have had to help them have a more enjoyable experience in Eve. I can understand as well that um, that's the case because I can tell Vinci wasn't really given a lot of assistance early on because there was some, um, well, let's just say that uh, Vinci, he or she, I'm not sure what their gender is or, or their identity, but um what parents they prefer, but um, I could tell that they were uh, committing one of the classic blunders because I looked up the name Vinsu to see if there was any corresponding characters. And even typically, if you look up a character name, there's dozens of them. But Vinsu is unique, and I only found one character with Vinsu in the name. That was Vinsu Mayaki. And back in May of last year, shortly after this, you know, comment uh, came out. Uh, I noticed that this person had died twice talking about exploration ship, you know, exploration, but not flying exploration ships. I mean, we have a logistics ship and a, and a, a combat frigate and both times died in Tama. Now for you new players out there, I'm going to say this cause I'm sure this hasn't come up in too many other videos out there, but if you're a new player, Tama is in a 0.3 system. So system security, that's low sec, which means Concord, the space police, they don't show up to avenge you if you die. And the purpose of the space police is not to prevent you from dying. It's to punish the bad guys when they kill you. So it's entirely after the fact punitive. Tama is also the most heavily camped gate system in all of EVE. There are people that all they do is live in Tama and kill new bros because they know they're going to come through. And I mean, they don't just kill new bros. I mean, I've died on gates and Tama, you know, going through with a fleet or, or, you know, trying to find my way to another system that I'm trying to get to. And unfortunately, Tama is one of the only systems I can go through to get there. Those kinds of things. So, you know, that this person died twice in Tama, complaining about not being able to find anything, you know, when they're exploring, not flying exploration vessels. I'm sorry, Vinsu, you were... You were underserved by myself in the community because you made all kinds of mistakes. And I'm hoping that this video helps others not to run into those same problems. So let's talk about a basic orientation around finding anomalies if you're a new player. The first thing you need to know is if you want to explore, use a ship which has bonuses suited to what you want to do. In this case, scanning and hacking. There are four such T1 vessels, and each race has one. The Amar have the Magnate, the Galente have the Imicus, the Kaldari have the Heron, and the Minmatar have the Probe. They are very inexpensive vessels, and you actually get them for free by doing career agent missions. Knowing which security sector of space you're in will also help you to recognize the systems as being a you know safe or unsafe place to be. And a little bit of situational awareness does behoove you. Now, where you get by as a new player until you've developed that situational awareness is in being able to look at a system and say, is this a place where I'm prepared to go and accept the consequences for being there? And another thing I'll give you as a piece of advice is go far afield from the place where you start in the game. And I'm about to explain why. New Eden is really, really big. 
There are 7,800 player reachable star systems, and there's actually another sixth that you can get to if the devs help you. Kachisei is the only character to have visited all known systems. It took them a decade to do it, and the achievement was so astounding, the devs built a Statue of Liberty-sized monument floating in space for this character. It's a huge, huge achievement, really. It took 15 years of playing Eve for this to ever come about. Nobody in 15 years had done it. So I understand as a new player the desire and sort of the instinct to stay close to home, quote-unquote. But please understand that as a new player, until you really decide where you want to be in the game style you want to adopt, there is no home. There is only where you decide to put your stuff. Stuff can always be moved. What will help you, don't stay close to your starting point. Don't be afraid to venture out. Nothing you do in your initial months in Eve is worthless. It is all part of the learning process. And please understand, you will lose ships. Places to avoid when you're first getting started. These are the starting systems that all new players start in. And what that means is that be it 10,000, 20,000, 40,000. It doesn't matter how many players or new characters are created each week. They start in one of these 12 systems. An awfully high number of fish in a really small pond. So when I say venture out, I mean move away from these starting systems as early as you can. To begin with, you're probably going to want to run the training missions from the career agents that start you off in these regions. But once you're comfortable, once you have a general idea of how to navigate getting around and how to warp from system to system, if you want to start exploring, get out there. This is one region of EVE. It is one of the larger regions in HiSec, that is area that has Concord presence. There's over 50 systems in this region, and this is one of those areas that I say is a very small pond. There's a lot of characters, active characters, living in the systems in this region. Now, I've talked a couple of times about career agents. Career agents exist for starter characters in these systems. So it's an extra 12 systems, um, three for each racial group. Both the starter systems and the career agent systems are considered protected territory. And what that means is there are important rules around those systems and new characters. Killing rookies in these starter systems will get you banned. Rookies are characters that are under 30, 30 days since the creation date, so in their first month. And systems with a security index of lower than 0.5 confer no protection from Concord space. So if you're going to get out and you're just learning, maybe stick to high sec. Be aware that if you go into any system that has a security rating below 0.5, which is 0.4 and below, that you're, you're on your own, essentially. You know, if you get blown up, it's on your recognizance. But if people come into those initial 24 systems and come kill you and you're a new player, all you have to do, if a GM doesn't see it right away, is jump into the rookie help chat and say, hey, I'm in this system and somebody killed me. One of the ISM or GM staff will look into it and bans will be handed out because they'll look at the, the kill logs and they'll see, oh yeah, this guy was killing newbies in the system. And those bans, they're unrelenting. They're serious about that because Eve, unfortunately, has had a problem recently keeping new players engaged and active. And we don't want to drive people away from the game. We don't want people rage quitting. We want people to engage and we want to grow the community. Now, these faded out systems here, these are the systems within three or four gems of Chaven, which is one of the first starting systems for Mar. If you are looking for anomalies 
and signatures that you can go to to try hacking. This is not the place to go because these areas, I can almost guarantee you, will already be fished out. They're also adjacent to one of Eve's major trade hubs. So if you're playing Amar and you start in Chaven, go further afield because you're going to have 20 or 30,000 active new players looking for the same content as you. Because unfortunately, a very high number of YouTubers who talk about EVE Online and present the game to the world have said one of the easiest ways to make money as a new character is to get out there and explore. And unfortunately, yeah, it's good advice. But you've got 40, 50, 60, 100,000 people with the exact same idea as you, and they're all living in a very small area rather than pushing the boundaries and getting out there, which is why I say you should divorce yourself from the idea of a quote unquote home station. Home is where you make it go somewhere else. Now, if you want to have an easier time finding your way around New Eden and you want to look at maps like these, use this link evemaps.dotland.net. You can explore the whole world of Eve and the interconnectivity of different systems and regions by looking at the maps presented here in a two dimensional format. Now, going back to Vinci's original comment, let's look at what a useful anomaly is. You can identify anomalies and signatures, and it's important to make a distinction between them now. Anomalies are the green brackets that show up in space. They're the ones that you can warp to without having to scan them down. Signatures require a scan down. All anomalies are useful. Again, Anomalies are the ones that appear automatically and you can just warp to from your probe scanner window. The ones that have to be scanned down are called cosmic signatures. Signatures come in a few varieties. Combat sites, harvest sites, relic sites, and data sites. Now you will need an exploration vessel or a vessel equipped with the right equipment to scan down combat and harvest sites as well as relic and data sites. But if you're not interested in mining and you're not interested in running, you know, PvP sites that you've scanned down, then just focus on relic and data. But there are people out there who will pay you for the location of those harvest and combat sites. So dropping a bookmark and then offering it up to people for money in exchange for the opportunity to go to, you know, to get there, that's worthwhile. Signatures have different difficulty with levels. Combat signatures range from easy to very difficult. Some have a rating system called the DED system. It's a rating out of 10. And relic and data sites have more difficult versions as well, including sites called ghost sites and sleeper caches. Ghost sites and sleeper caches are for advanced users. If you are brand new to the game, I highly recommend that you do not do those, but that you bookmark them. You warp to them, drop a bookmark, and then immediately warp away and you offer up the location of those sites to more advanced players who will pay you in turn for having saved them the time to go and scan them down. Now, Relic and Data Sites are indeed a great way to make money if you're clever and you find regions where they're available amply. But there's another reason to go to these sites. They are some of the most beautiful in EVE. And the devs have spent a lot of time, and a lot of the artists have spent a lot of time, making Eve beautiful. And there is a joy to be had from just exploring it. But be aware that when you're a new player and you go into wormholes, if you're going exploring, looking for, you know, these sites, you will find a lot of very beautiful sites and wormholes. But you will also find sites where the NPCs can kill you instantaneously from 100 kilometers away. So maybe leave hacking sites and wormholes until you're a little bit more familiar with Eve. Now, that's not to say that you shouldn't go doing it and that you shouldn't stretch yourself. Just be aware you will lose ships. Now, when it comes to PvE scalability and how not to bite off more than you can chew, there is a, and I've covered this in other videos, there is a rating system out of anomalies, that is the, the systems that are the... Um, uh, locations you can warp to immediately 
that rate from 1 through 10 on a standard rating, and they appear in high, low, and null sec. And they run this current gamut, green being easy, red being hard. There's also additional levels of difficulty on this basic structure. So for example, if you're in Sancha Pirate Space, and you have a Sancha Hideaway, that's where the faction word comes in there, because it'll be whatever you know, faction of pirates live in the space that you're in. A Sancha's Hideaway can also come in a variety called the Sancha's Hidden Hideaway, which is significantly more difficult than just a basic hideaway. Now, if drones are the resident pirate in the region that you're in, the drone variant will come with its own name. And that's reflected here. Now, when you're looking at your probe scanner, anomalies will just show up green with a little arrow to the right of them that will allow you to warp them directly at whatever your default warp range is. But sites that need to be scanned down, the name of the site will not be immediately visible. You have to wait until you've actually scanned the site down for it to turn green and become warpable. Sites that have to be scanned at an anomaly can be run in an exploration frigate, unless they're a combat site. Most anomalies in a high sec can be run in a combat frigate. I hope that this has helped you to make a little bit more sense about exploration, understanding scanning, and understanding how to, you know, be a little bit more um, sustainable in your initial weeks and months in EVE. If you have any questions, please feel free to throw them in the comment section below. Um, again, this is not an exhaustive video. This was just meant to help you understand this aspect of play and to answer Vince's questions. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a great night.